now with the concept of the streamline coordinates at the normal direction, we'll take the new portion is the plane circular vortex flow. In the case of the plane circular vortex flow, you have already, uh, you have seen in the sometimes, and there's uh, some physical examples also there. What kind of the example you can see, there is a whirlpool in the river. In a river, sometimes you will say there is a, sometimes some water whirlpool is creating over it. So one rotationality is coming over the flow. It may be because of the free vortex or force vortex. These are the things we will see one by one. But before this concept, what we are discussing the last topic here, along the end direction, the most important equation we have write it down here. We'll take the reference of it in the next topic. So in the plane circular vortex flow, we are going to discuss this. In that case, we know first, taking this part, first we are discussing about H, the mechanical head is P by rho G plus V square by 2G plus Z. This thing we know. Before coming, what is the plane circular vortex flow? I am just explaining this part is the prelude of the portion. So mechanical head that is. So along the streamline, along the streamline, the change of mechanical head, del H by del S, that is zero for always. If it is satisfying in visit condition, incompressible condition, as well as the gravity is the only body force. If all assumption is satisfied, so this is there would be along the streamline. The change in mechanical energy with respect to the streamline coordinate is zero always. There's no doubt about it. From the Bernoulli's equation, we can know. But what about this thing? What is the normal along the normal direction, whether it is changing or not? It depends on the flow. What kind of flow it is? If it is an irrotational flow, if it is an irrotational flow, so then the H is constant over the flow field. So this is, a, is zero only in case of the irrotational flow. Irrotational flow. Then this condition will be satisfied. Otherwise, normal condition, it is, is equal to, not equal to zero. So there is a change of mechanical head with respect to the normal direction. There is a change of the mechanical head with respect to the normal direction. There always there is a change. So del H by del N, if you are going to finding out there is some positive value or negative value, whatever it is, but there is some finite balance is there. So one by rho G, del P by del N, plus, so here, if you, do the integration, it is a V del V del N by G. The two will be cancelled out. Plus del Z by del. This will come. So if you do the derivation, it will come. So now this part, what is that part, we will take from here in this equation, del P del N. What is the del P del N? We are getting it. Del P del N we are getting from this equation. Del P del N plus, we're just writing it down, rho G, rho G, del Z del N, rho P square by R, radius of the curvature. In that case, in that case, the one by rho G, del P del N, if you're going to do, what is the one by rho G del P del N? It will give you one by G V square by R minus del Z by del N. So this you put in this equation. If you put this thing in the equation minus del Z by del N 
plus plus one by g v square by r plus v by g del v del n plus del z by del n. If we put it, so simply this will be cancelled out. This will be cancel out. And what is the remaining part will be there? The change of mechanical energy with respect to the normal to the streamline direction will be V by G del V del N plus one by G V square by R. One by G V square by R. There is a prelude part. How we come from this prelude part to the plane circular vortex flow? What is the plane circular vortex flow? Then we have to know it. In the case of the plane circular vortex flow, plane circular vortex flow is such a flow where only the tangential component is existing. Is exist only. And because of this tangential component, in the, over the flow field, there is some rotationality of the flow field. Fluid is rotating in this way because of the, when rotation possible, there, when there is a, some tangential velocity would be there. Because of the tangential velocity, only rotation possible. So it is rotating, fluid particle is rotating in this way. The steam line is in this way. That is the streamline. I'm drawing the, this the streamline. So only V theta is existing as, as it is a plane. So if polar coordinate, we are considering here polar coordinate. So that is the R, theta, and Z. Z if cylindrical coordinate, then Z will come. So otherwise polar coordinate, only R and theta will be there. So along the theta, there is a velocity. But along R, Along R, what would the velocity V R? That is equal to zero. Along Z, if you take the cylindrical coordinate also, along Z also, axial velocity is zero. So only there is existence of the tangential velocity. And because of this tangential velocity, there is a rotationality of the flow. So V theta is only existing. So streamline is the streamline, yes, direction. Streamline direction, yes, direction. S direction, S direction is theta direction, sorry, theta direction. Because theta, along the theta direction, because it is a rotating in the rotating in this way, theta direction is the S direction. And what is the normal direction? Normal direction is this way. There's the normal direction, is the R direction. So N direction, in direction normal to the streamline is nothing but the R direction in this kind of the flow. So in this kind of the plane circular vortex flow, its direction, that means along the streamline direction is a theta direction, in direction normal to the, uh, uh, normal to the streamline is the R direction. So hence, whatever the N is here, Whatever the n is here in this equation, you can change by r. So we can write it down, the plane circular vortex flow equation in this way, the change of mechanical head with respect to the radius. Because n just, we replace the n by r is equal to v, only v theta is existing. V, is a, v means v theta, v theta by g, del V theta by G, uh, del V theta by del R, just we replacing V by V theta and N by R plus one by G V theta square by R. Okay. That is the actual equation for the plane circular vortex flow as the head equation. So what is the, now one thing I'll show you, one more thing I'm telling you, you see it, del H by R del theta 
is zero. Because along the streamline, Bernoulli's principle will be satisfied everywhere along the streamline. So H is, in, the, in case of the plane, H is a only function of, H is only function of R. Because Z coordinate we are not considering in the plane surface, that's why. H is only function of R. So we can write it this partial differentiation in terms of the ordinary differentiation. dH by dR is equal to V theta by G, del V theta by del R plus one by G, V theta square by R. That is the equation is coming for the plane circular vortex flow, not yet complete. Still some more mathematics in there. So I rub this total portion now. But before rubbing it, it's a better to take a separate page because so many things you have written it here. So pressure distribution will come for come after some times. We are giving some prelude, prelude of this part. So in this prelude part, we can say that what is the mechanical heat changes with respect to the radius for the plane circular vortex flow. Now we are introducing what is the free vortex. Now we are going to introduce what is the free vortex flow. So free vortex flow, in case of the free vortex flow, the flow is a irrotational. By astronizing to here, see, because there is a rotationality in the flow, you may ask why it is irrotational, but enter the flow field that is a, actually, it is a e-rotational flow. Because the velocity component, whatever you are getting it, if you take this value is a null vector, you are always reaching some null vector. That is only indicator of the e-rotational flow. So in the pre-vortex flow is a, naturally is a e-rotational flow. So e-rotational flow, over the e-rotational flow, everywhere the H is constant. So e-rotational flow, by definition we know, H is constant, that means Bernoulli equation is satisfied everywhere if it is all other assumption also satisfied then. So that is why, so that is why we can say that dH, by dr is equal to zero. Here, as it is an e-rotational flow. So dh by dr, we have seen it is the previous cases. That is the v theta, del v theta by del r by g plus v theta square by r dr is equal to zero. That's from the equation we are getting. But it is a partial in form. So before doing this calculation, we take one more thing, that is the continuity equation. Flow continuity. Because if there is a flow, it should satisfy the continuity equation. Other than there is no meaning of the flow. So we are writing it now. Now we are writing it, the continuity equation. So continuity equation, we are considering here incompressible flow. Make it mind, that is the incompressible flow. So continuity equation for the incompressible flow, we can be able to write it, that is the, uh, sorry, divergence of the velocity vector is equal to zero. That is also continuity equation for the incompressible flow. You remind it, it is a for the incompressible flow. So what is the del operator? Del operator is unit vector along R, del by del R. Unit vector along theta, del by R, d theta. Unit vector along z, del by z. What is the velocity vector? Velocity vector is only v theta is existing, 
along this direction, in theta direction. So if you do this operation, divergent of velocity vector, so this two only will come. Because other terms become zero. So it will come L V theta R del theta is equal to zero. Continue to equation, we are getting this thing because no VR, no VZ. So we can see here, V theta is not a function of theta. The plane circular vortex flow, V theta is not a function of theta. And this V theta is only function of R for the plane plane circular vortex flow. So we can write it down del V theta by del R. The partial differentiation, we can write it down the ordinary differentiation. This partial differentiation, we could be able to write it the ordinary differentiation because it's the only function of R, no other variables, no other dependence. So the V theta, G will be cancelled out. So this equation, we can able to rewrite this equation, del V theta dr plus V theta square by R is equal to zero. So hence, we get two equation. One equation, either V theta is equal to zero. It is not possible. We have tell it V theta is existing here only. In case of the plane circular vortex flow, V theta is existing, so it could not be zero. So the remaining part of this equation will come del V theta by d dr plus V theta by R is equal to zero. For the free vortex flow, keep in mind this equation is only for the free vortex flow. So if you do this, rearrange this equation, it will come in this way. V theta by VR plus dr by R is equal to zero. If you do this integration, it will come ln v theta plus ln r is equal to ln c, natural log. So ln v theta into r is equal to ln c. So v theta is equal to c by r. That means tangential velocity is inversely proportional with the radial direction. That is the most important equation for the free vortex flow is the free vortex flow velocity equation. These are the only free vortex flow velocity equation we are writing here. It can be proved in other way also. That is also the other way from the e-rotational concept even, but we can write it down with just Again, we are writing the free vortex flow, the same equation. We can, how we could be able to write it from the other equation. Free, why we are doing in the both manner? Because it will give me the idea of other vortex flow. Force vortex, we can be easily understood by this concept. That time we did not require that much derivation for the force vortex flow when we know. So it is we are considering irrotational flow. Irrotational flow. So irrotational flow, that means this curl of the velocity vector is equal to zero. We know irrotational flow, the curl of the velocity vector is equal to zero. That means this. Vorticity along Z, that means perpendicular, uh, perpendicular to the plane, because it is a plane circular, so vorticity along Z perpendicular to the plane is, is equal to, I'm writing this equation, no need to remember. I can derive also this thing, but we are not doing this. That is the equation will come here. 
So that, sorry, this is the VR, sorry. Small mistake is there, it's not a V theta, it's a VR. So VR. So now VR, we know it is a zero. So this term will be all, already zero. So this equation, V theta by VR plus V theta by R is equal to zero. It's a null vector as it is a irrotational flow. And as well as from the continuity equation also, we know this partial differentiation is no more a ordinary differentiation. V theta by DR plus P theta by R is equal to zero. So we are getting the same equation, V theta is equal to C by R from this manner also. But you can ask how I write this thing. This thing you have to go back to the kinematics chapter. So this also I can show you because uh, no such confusion should be there. You should have a clear concept regarding this part. So how it is coming in this way? So kinematics, how we are doing, if you remember, you could be able to understand how we calculate the velo uh, yeah, angular velocity. So angular, double of the angular velocity will give you the vorticity vector. Double of the angular velocity will give you the vorticity vector, always. So how we are doing there? We are doing the angular velocity, how to find it at angular velocity for that basis. So here at a r, at r distance, at r distance of theta angle, some theta angle, if you take some theta angle at r distance theta angle, at a point, there is an element where the two elements, there is two element is there which are initially perpendicular. One fluid element we are considering, which are perpendicular in shape. How it was looks like? It was looks like in this manner. So these two are perpendicular in shape. Initially, both are perpendicular. An initial velocity at here that was VR and V. Initial velocity of these two elements on this point. What is happening here? After a certain time, delta T. After a certain time delta t, this fluid element is deformed. This fluid element is deformed. How it is getting deformed? It is now getting deformed. Let you see, deform in this manner. This element comes here, and this element is coming. Okay, some deformation is taking place. So. This angle, what is the angle change happen here? Let me see here. So there is some angle changes. This angle, you take del alpha at delta t time del alpha. This angular change is the del beta. Del alpha del beta. Okay. So what is this values? What is this much? This much value is nothing but that differentiation, how much changes. So along this direction, it is going radially, but there is a change in the V theta component. So del V theta by del R is the velocity changes over del R distance. This distance initially it was del R. So what is that? Now element is like this way. This angle is the delta theta moves. Here it is move delta theta. Here it is move delta theta. Okay, that is the condition. So the, their movement is that much into delta t time. So in this triangle, in this triangle, if you take tan del alpha from this concept, tan del alpha is equal to this particle part Del R del T divided by the horizontal part. So del R will be cancelled out. So if the delta T is very small, 
So alpha also is very small. Del alpha also very small. And tan del alpha will be equal to del alpha. Will be equal to. So del alpha by delta t, rate of change of angle, will become simply in this. So rate of change of angle. Angular deformation, rate of change of angular deformation in this direction. So it is happening in the in this direction. Counterclockwise direction. Okay. Similarly, here how much changes? Here you are going along theta direction, you are moving theta direction, and VR is changing. Radially change. Radially previously here, now it is here. Del VR, del theta. In this triangle, if you consider, so what is that base part? It is R delta. Because this is a periphery type. This perimeter, actually. So, N delta beta will give you del VR del theta, del theta, divided by R delta theta. So delta theta will be cancel out. And here, the same concept delta T, it tends to zero, delta beta tends to zero. So delta beta by delta T, which is a beta dot, which will come in terms of DVR R D theta, and which is moving in the clockwise direction. Which will be moves in the clockwise direction. Now, in that case, what is the angular velocity? Angular velocity is half of this term. Other than this, as apart from this, one more term is involved in the angular velocity, and that you are not looking phi theta by r in the Counterclockwise direction. Counterclockwise, we are taking always positive direction. So omega jet, omega jet perpendicular, omega jet is half of this part, del v theta dr. That means alpha dot minus beta dot, alpha dot minus beta dot. Why it is minus is coming? Because opposite in sense rotation plus V theta by R. So omega J is 2 into that's why you could be able to write it here in this way. I hope it is clear to you. This way we are getting the free vortex flow. And from both of the cases, we have reached here. From the both cases, we have reached the same part that is the V theta is equal to C by R. V theta is equal to C by R. So we are getting V theta is equal to C by R for free vortex flow. Yes. That I think it is clear to you. Now we'll talk about the pressure distribution in the free vortex flow. So one minute, just. Just a few minutes here, just wait. Okay. Now we'll come back to this part again. Now we see the free vortex flow, we are getting it. Now we'll talk about the pressure distribution in the free vortex flow, but it is a general pressure dis distribution. Index. Simply we can tell it this thing, pressure distribution. If you are asked what is the pressure distribution, you can tell it simply. How? Because it is a e-rotational flow field. It's a e-rotational E rotational flow field. Thus, 
Bernoulli equation, you can apply it any, any two point if you want to know the pressure distribution. So if you take two point, one point is one and another point is two. So in that case, if you take two point, one and two, such a cases, you can be able to write it P1 by rho g plus V theta one square by two g plus Z1 is equal to P2 by rho g plus V theta two square by two g plus Z2. If you are considering the same horizontal plane, so Z1 and Z2 becomes cancel out. So it will comes in this manner. P1 by rho g minus P2 by it. pressure difference, you can be able to find out in this manner. In this manner, you could be able to get it. A simple irrotation flow. But how it is coming? That is a simple for the free vortex flow, but, but force vortex flow, it will come some complication, complicated one. So that's why we are doing some generalization. It will give you the better understanding how the pressure distribution will come into the picture in this manner. We'll get back this equation in a different way. That's we'll see now. I erase everything and I'm just writing the Euler's equation, simple Euler's equation. Euler's equation in the terms of the vector term. Is equal to minus grad P plus rho body force. That is the Euler's equation in terms of the vector terms. Now we are considering R coordinate, theta coordinate, Z coordinate. It's not a plane enough. We are taking the axial also. So axial also we are considering here. That means in a port, if there is some or whirlpool in the river, uh, river, we are telling it. In that case, how it will comes in the surface? We'll see. In the surface, some because of this vortex flow, some rotationality will comes in this way. In this way, some flow will be. So we'll see this thing. What is the condition in there? But just for example, I'm telling it. So this direction is the R direction. This direction is the R direction. Theta direction, we cannot see it's a round direction. And that is a J direction. That is our consideration we are doing in this way. So what is the variation of the pressure? We'll see one by one. So the variation of the pressure we'll see. This way just. So if you split this part, first, what is the total derivative of V? What is the total derivative of the V? We have to consider first. So this first, this left-hand side part, if you consider, and left-hand side specifically, what is this total derivative of the V? is only V theta and E theta, right? epsilon theta. That is the unit vector into magnitude. And D by DT, we can write it down del by del T plus, then, sorry, one minute. We are just rectifying this part. can be able to write it down. There is a V dot del of it. V dot del of it. So V is only this one, V we know. What is the del operator? Del operator, ER, divide ER, theta, D by R D theta plus E Z. So if you do V dot del operator, what it will comes? It will comes only with this two terms, this and this. So D del by R D 
theta d theta into v theta into del by del r d theta for v and del by r del your terms so that is the this part so it is considering as a steady part so it is zero we are considering it's a steady so d v theta is nothing but v del That is the part, and V del is equal to. We are just now getting from um, for the plane circular vortex flow. It's a uh, not plane. It is over the vortex flow, three dimensional vortex flow. We are considering here. So V theta is equal to V theta. That's all. If you do this operation. If you operation, if you do the operation, what will come? This is a separate part. This is a separate part. Splitly, if you differentiate it, so what will comes? V theta, del V theta, R D theta into V theta. First term. Second term will come V theta square by R D E theta. This two term will come, and. Important thing is the first term itself zero because v theta is not a function of theta. First term itself zero. This is the no existence of the first part. And the second part, this del e theta by d theta is nothing but e r negative. That is nothing but e r negative. So what is coming? V theta square by r. What is that? That is nothing but the centripetal acceleration. How this term is coming? You can see from the diagram. If you made the diagram, it will be can be easily because if there is a change of the tangential unit vector with respect to the angle, it will give you the radial vector inwards to the center. Radial vector inverse to the center, so that's what gives it all us. So left hand side of this equation, so left hand side of the equation is coming minus rho v theta squared by r r. That is the left hand side equation. What about the right hand side? So we rewrite this thing. Over the pages, we rub this all part. So what we are getting it the left hand side equation minus minus rho v theta square by r r and right hand side minus grad. So minus grad means del p del r grad of pressure del p r d theta. E theta, del p, del z, e z. That is the grad p in the cylindrical coordinate system. Plus, gravity is the only body force. So gravity is the only body force means minus rho g, and it is acting z direction. Z direction gravity is acting. Always, I have shown you the previous jet direction. This is a jet direction. This direction. So gravity is acting over the jet direction. E z. The negative, negative two z. E z. That's right. So don't confuse with the positive, negative in this way. So gravity is the downwards, is the negative side. So in this equation, if you separate e r, so over this e r, what are there? Over this year, so we separate, segregate one by one. What is the year in terms of the year? What is there? In terms of the year, this part should be equal to the minus del p. Okay, the pressure change with respect to R that is along e theta. Pressure change with respect to the theta is equal to zero. No e theta term in this equation. 
other than this. So we can say pressure is not a function of theta. Axisymmetric case of theta. Axisymmetric case. And Ej is equal to del P del Z plus rho G is equal to zero or del P del Z is equal to minus rho G, which is nothing but your hydrostatic law. You get this from hydrostatic law. Now, if you see here that there is a less jet variation, you are considering over there is a less jet variation. That means the P variation with respect to the jet is less rather than this about the R. So we can write it down. Del P is positive for side. Del P by del R, if there is a less jet variation, we can write it down. P theta squared by R. Hence, this is up to, it is applicable for free force, all kinds of the vortex flow. Now we are introducing the free vortex flow. Free vortex flow V theta is equal to rho C square by R square. So R Q becomes R Q. V theta is equal to C by R. We are just putting here. So DP C square PR by R Q. If you do the integration, P, rho is a constant, C is a constant, come out of the integration one to two. If you're doing it, what is the answer will come? P2 minus P1, rho C squared is the outside and it will come minus two, sorry, it will come in here, R minus two. Okay, from R1, to R2. Hence, if you do this thing, so rho by two, two you take it out. So minus C square by R square, C square by R square, R1. So rho by two, C square by R1 square minus C square by R2 square. That is the rho by two, V theta one square minus V theta two square. So you are getting this P2 plus half rho V theta two square plus P1 plus half rho V theta one square. If you divide it by the rho G, the Bernoulli equation will get back. So that is for the free vortex flow. But this equation, this equation is applicable for free and force both. So we'll see the same thing in the case of the force vortex flow, how it is right in the next lecture. So here we finish the free vortex flow concept. The free vortex flow is the normally free natural process. It is coming back, just like the whirlpool in the river, we are telling it. Sometimes in the some stagnant water, also some kind of the vortex city will create due to the lack of the pressure. Next will come the force vortex flow in the next lecture.